We're going to be looking today at how to build a church website in a matter of minutes. And to start, we're going to go to www.finalweb.com and click this bottom option that says try it free. After I click that, I'm going to click start trial. And then I'm offered a choice of templates. I'm going to choose this top left template here. And the system's going to go ahead and build me a website to start working with right away. Once inside, I'm going to be in edit mode. And the system's going to offer me to take a tour. And I'm going to go ahead and say, not right now, I'm going to say don't show again. But if you ever want to get back to that, I do suggest it. It's a good option. Just hit this question mark right here. Now here in edit mode, I have a set of options on my left and I have a preview of my website on the right. And as I hover over different areas of the site, you'll notice a set of icons appears above each area up to the left. Each of these major areas is called a group. Our sites are comprised of groups, and as I hover over the group, I have icons that let me control and add to and remove things from that group. And then within each group, I have sections. For instance, this is a header section and this is a calendar section. And as I hover over the sections, I get options to control the sections up to the right, and a smaller set of icons. So I have group options to the left and section, section options up to the right. I can arrange groups on my page by clicking the Arrange Groups icon. So if I want to change the order of my groups, I can drag them up and down on the page and put them in a different location. For now, I'm going to keep them where they're at, and I'll click Done Arranging. The first thing I'd like to edit on my site is I'd like to change the logo area up here. If I hover over this text, I get an Edit Logo option. Now, if I don't have a logo for my church, I can just type the text of the title of my church. I can save that, and that will appear up in the upper left. If I do have a logo, though, I'd like to upload that image. So I'm going to change this to an image. I'm going to choose a local file off of my drive, and this is my logo right here. So that's going to go ahead and upload to the site. Once it's there, I can click Save Changes, and I see my logo in the upper left. The next thing I'd like to change is this background image on my title header. Uh, I'm going to go to my group properties because this background is attached to that group and I'm going to remove the image that's there. Now it's important to note that I can have three different types of backgrounds, a color, an image, or a video. Uh, for our purposes, I'm just going to choose image for now. I can retrieve that image from a location on my hard drive. I can choose an image that I've already uploaded to the server. Or I can choose a stock photo. This is a really powerful feature. We've integrated with a system called pixabay.com that provides one and a half million royalty-free images for your use. So I'm going to search for the word nature and find some different pictures of nature that might work as a background for that area of my site. I'm going to choose this one right here, and that is added to my site. Now another thing I can do is I can make my text more or less readable here by using an overlay color in this opacity slider. If I slide this darkened color up, you'll see my text comes out real clear. If I slide it way back, the text is less readable and blends in with the leaves. So probably somewhere in between, right about 30% would look good. So I can still see the image and I can, uh, and can, I can read my text well. So I'm going to save those changes. And I want to edit this text to reflect the name of my church. So I'm going to go ahead and simply click on it. And it brings me into the text editor where I have bold, italics, underline. I have font controls and styles and so forth. Right now I just want to type the name of my church. And for my tagline here, I'm just going to use my city and state. <clears throat> we'll leave the button as it is for right now. I'm going to save these changes. And this section is good for now. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that I now have a green check mark that was not here when I first launched the site. And that's because I've made some changes to my draft. When you're working in Final Web 2, you're not working on the live copy of your site. So if this is a site that's being published right now, people are looking at it, and I start making changes here, they're not seeing my changes as I'm making them. I can make my changes. I can feel comfortable swapping some text around, making some adjustments. And then when I'm ready, I can click this green check mark here to go ahead and publish this page and make it the live copy of my site. Uh, a couple of other really helpful features here are down in the lower left, I have different viewport selections. Right now, I'm looking at the desktop view of my site. If I click this middle option, I'm looking at what my site would look like on a tablet. And then if I click the option all the way to the right, I can see what my site might look like on a mobile phone. And I can make adjustments to each of these and find the optimal presentation for all of them and save those changes separately. Right now, I'm just going to continue working on the desktop version, and I'm going to allow the other two to be automatically created, which generally works very well. 
The next thing I'd like to change is this service times area. I'm not going to make a lot of changes here. Obviously, you can enter your own text. I'm just going to highlight all the text. I'm going to change the font size so that everything is a uniform 18 point font. And I'm going to take off the bold that's there and just add it only to the top line. Uh, another thing I'd like to do is I'd like to add a little bit of padding so that this isn't so flush against this picture of the trees. So in order to do that, I go to the group properties for this group. And under layout settings, I can add some top padding. And I'll save that change. And this section is good to go for now. Uh, some of these sections I'll get rid of, but I like this one here. It's, it's called a tile section, and it gives me different links to locations on my site. I'm going to keep it, but I want to rename what it's linking to. So I'm going to call this one Sermons, and I'm going to call this one Calendar, and this one I'll call History. I'll go ahead and save those changes, and I'm going to change the images that are used for these as well. So for the Sermons option, I'm going to use a stock photo and maybe something like a picture of a Bible would work well. So I'll choose this one here. And then I'm going to go ahead and adjust these also. If I'd like to, I can also adjust the number of tiles I have. I can change this from three to four on a column or on a row. I'll keep it at three for now. I'm going to save my changes. And then down here, I'm going to delete these two sections. Uh, I think this calendar might be a little bit large for my home page. I'll use something a little bit smaller. So I'll remove both of these. Now I have an empty group. I can click Add Section. And I'm presented with all the different types of sections that I can use. Most commonly, you'll be using plain text sections, headings, and images, things like that. But there are many different features we can add. Right now, I'm going to use this one called an Upcoming Events section. It's just sort of a calendar preview. Now every calendar on Final Web 2 links to a Google Calendar. So I just need to put in my Google Calendar ID. Um, for me, that's my Gmail address. It's not always going to be your Gmail address. We have another video coming out. Look at the same channel for how to find your Google Calendar ID if you're not sure how to do that and how to make sure your calendar is published. But this one should work because it's a public calendar and that is my calendar ID. So it pulls in my events right here. Uh, I don't like the way it's laying out though, it's kind of tall and narrow, so I'm going to click on Arrange Sections, and I'm going to make it wider. Go ahead and save my changes there. I'm going to go ahead and make this area with the map sort of a general contact section. So I'm going to click on my text here, change it to say Contact Info, and I'm going to go to the Properties for my map, and enter my correct address. Save the changes there. And I could change this address as well for the purpose of our, of our demonstration. I'll just move on. One thing I want to do also is add another section, though, uh, for a form for people to contact us. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Form for my section type. And I'm going to use an existing form because there's a contact form built into the system. You can use it. You can modify it if you like. And it adds that to my, my group here. Uh, I am going to click on this form and make sure in the form settings that any submissions will go to my email address. I'll enter my email in there and click off of the form and I want to arrange my sections a little bit so that it looks a little nicer. So I'll click on arrange sections, and make the map smaller, move it off to the right. I'll make this printed address smaller as well and move it above the map. And I'm going to take the form and make it occupy the left portion of the group. Um, oh, and another thing that would be nice is to change the background of this group as well. So I'm going to click on Group Properties. And I'm going to add an image. Just like before, I'll choose a stock photo. I'll choose something with like a barley field like this. And I'm going to use my opacity slider to make sure my text is nice and readable but I don't want to fade the image out too much. I'll save my changes there. I'd like to add one other group to this home page. I'm going to go ahead and click Add Group on the left. I'm going to make it an empty group. A standard group is fine. This is going to be a sermon download library. So I've got an empty group here. I'm going to click on Add Section and look for one called Media Library right here. I've got two different options for layout right now, so I'm going to choose Block Layout. And it asks me to choose a library, but I don't have one yet. So I'll create a new one and call it Sermons. 
save my library and add the section. So I've got this new library section ready to go. I am going to add a little bit of top padding by going to group properties, adding the top padding just like we did with that other section above. And if I want to go ahead and start adding sermons here, I can go ahead and do that. I can click on edit media library on the section options and I'll add a file. Uh, I have a sermon here ready to upload, so I'll double click on that one and I'll title it James 1 Dealing with Trials. And once that is uploaded, I can click Create and Add. I can type the name of the speaker and I can also choose an image to go along with that sermon. I'll use a stock photo and since we're talking about trials, maybe something like a storm would be, would be good. So I'll click this option here add that to my file and save my library. So I have a media library now ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and add two more files to this but I'll do it off the camera so just so you can see what it looks like. Same process. So I've got extra files added into my media library so you can see what that looks like. Just a couple more things to do here. There's this footer area that contains some basic site information that appears at the bottom of every page. I'm going to go ahead and change that information or at least show you how to do it by clicking on site settings. I can put in the name of my church here. Uh, if I have a link to social media sites, I can put my full Facebook link here, my Twitter link here, so on and so forth. Uh, and I can put my correct address and contact information here as well and save those down. And that will modify that footer. Once I'm happy with the way this page looks, I can go ahead and click the check mark to publish the page. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that, publish now, and that now becomes the live version of that page. So if, if this site were live right now and people were looking at it, they could now see the changes that I had just made. If I'd like to see what my site looks like outside of edit mode and without these icons showing up all over the place, I can click this option that says view full screen and the system will open up a new tab where I can view my whole site and see what it looks like to the user. And of course I can just close that tab or switch tabs to get back to my edit mode. Uh, one thing that's important to do if you are working in our system and you like what you've done and you want to come back to it, you want to maybe purchase the package, make sure that you save your trial site. Click right here to save trial site. The system will prompt you occasionally to do that as well. And I'm just going to enter my information here. Once my information is entered, I'll go ahead and click on Save Trial. The system will email me and let me know, hey, you created a trial site at Final Web. This is how you get back to it if you want to work with it some more. And if I want to make my site live and actually publish it on the internet, attach a domain name to it, then I can click this option here and follow the on-screen prompts. A very simple process. You can get your site up and running in a matter of minutes. One last thing, if you want to add additional pages, you would do that here as well. And additional pages are created just the same way that we made this home page. You create the page, you add groups, and you add sections to the group. Uh, if you have any questions about the process, please let us know. Just contact us by going to finalweb.com and clicking on support. We'd love to hear from you. We'll also be publishing more videos on this channel about how to use our 2.0 system, so please check those out when you get a chance.